It seems that both Korean fried chicken and Nashville hot chicken have taken the country by storm over the past decade or so. For good reason. On one side, you have a perfectly crisp, golden Korean version of an American classic. In Korea, fried chicken is usually considered anju, meaning that it's usually consumed while drinking adult beverages. On the other side, you have a spicy, deeply red version of southern fried chicken hailing from Tennessee, the classic, the famous, the world famous at this point, Nashville hot chicken. Now, let's keep it real here. You really can't go wrong with either one of these different variations of fried chicken. However, in typical fashion here on this channel, there can only be one. Welcome to another episode of Battle of the Bites where we cook two similar foods from scratch, then compare them head to head to see which reigns supreme. This battle is gonna be a bit different. We're gonna take a field trip over to a very tight restaurant here in Chicago to gain some insight from a chicky expert and buddy of mine. Yo, what up guys? We are here at Perilla Korean American Fair here in Chicago. We got our boy, Chef Andy Lim, owner and chef of Korean American Fair, Perilla Korean American Fair, who also happens to own a Nashville hot chicken concept called Sir Chicken. So this man is quite literally the perfect expert for, for what we're doing here today, dude. So thanks for being here. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so we're going to first do our recipe for Korean fried chicken. Cool. The way we do it here at Perilla are the flats and the drumettes. Nice. But for today, we will be doing the entire bird. The whole bird. The whole bird. The special day. Indeed. And this is salt and pepper on here. So yeah, so yeah. quite literally salt mm -hmm. and pepper. Okay. Um, just to cure the chicken. It's about a 2% uh, cure recipe. Word. Uh, we just leave it on overnight and then on a rack and it kind of helps if you can feel it dries out the skin a yeah, little totally. bit. It'll give it a nice cook. And dry brands are nice because it's a little like less messy for somebody yeah. like, maybe cooking at home like with, you know what I mean? No, like, for sure. Having also, a big jug. with dry brines I've found that it retains more of the moisture than it would in a wet brine which okay. is kind of counterintuitive. Yeah, but, hot take. But yeah, but that's just scientific. It's science. <laughs> I don't tell you. All right. <laughs> so, so first we'll make our dredge for the chicken. So first we will be using cornstarch. Um, a little bit of salt. All right, all right. So as you can see, we are literally seasoning it at every step, right? Mm -hmm. So we season the chicken, we season the dredge, and we, we will season the batter as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then last but not least, a little bit of baking powder. Word. This is gonna give it some lift. A little souffle action. A little souffle. Cool. Nice. And then just give it a... Whisk it all up. Nice little whisk. What can I do, man? Get my hands dirty here. Just look pretty, Ed. I don't look that pretty, that's not my thing. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so this is our dredge. We'll make our batter next. Same idea, we have flour, some more cornstarch. So the reason why I like to use cornstarch is to give it that extra level of crispiness. That's sort of like what differentiates Korean fried chicken from American fried chicken. That's yeah. a big fact. That crispy, <laughs> right. super crunchiness, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that's what comes from the starch. Um, and again, a little bit of salt. Same idea, we wanna make sure every step of the way we are seasoned and... That's a restaurant cook thing, people. Season your food. Season your food. Season your food. That's like a huge differentiator from somebody who works in a professional kitchen versus at home. Everything is seasoned every single step of the way. That's why in my recipes it always says kosher salt, salt to taste, because you should be seasoning all the time. There's no real way to measure out exactly how much salt you need. So this is uh, the dry part of it, and then we're gonna, we're gonna add the wet. A Little bit of vodka, a little bit of water. Ooh, that's a nice wet. That's a nice wet. <laughs> so I'm going to eyeball this. So um, usually it's it's approximately equal parts, but mm -hmm. I'm putting half, let it mix, and then we'll add the rest. We're doing some intuitive cooking here today. Exactly. Always. Cooking should always be intuitive. I like any anytime you have a recipe, it's just a guideline, right? Like I feel that. And this dope analogy it was like a recipe is like sheet music. It like yeah. tells you how to play a song, but it's on the like musician or the cook and the artist in this case to yeah. like make it their own and add flavor to it. And yeah. Like, so you see how I did not add all of the liquid and we're, we're at a pretty good spot here. Right? Like paint almost, right? So we got our we got our dredge, we got our batter. That's the, the, the KFC way. And that's part of the secret. And, and your dredge is basically gonna like allow the, the batter to stick to the chicken. Without it, the batter might slip off the slippery skin even though it's dried out. This helps and it also adds an element of crunchiness too. Exactly. All right, so Nashville hot chicken, a little different than KFC. Yes. Because with the KFC, you know, you got the whole dredge and the batter thing. Mm -hmm. So what's what's the main differentiator here? So we're not using any starch in this one. Okay. Uh, this is just straight up. Americano. Southern style yeah. fried chicken, right? Mm -hmm. We have 
We have uh, buttermilk uh, and we have flour. So literally just buttermilk flour. Yep. We're gonna turn this into something a little more substantial with some egg and everything, yep. right? Cool. So this, we like buttermilk because there is a little bit of acidity in yeah. there, right? Tangy. It gives you a nice little tang, right? Sweet. Um, so the process here is literally dredge, mm -hmm. wet, mm -hmm. dredge, fryer. Cool. Cool. So in here, uh, it's going to be straight up AP flour and salt. That's the whole thing. That's the Keep magic. Keep it plain and simple, baby. It's more for the texture and coating and making sure things are crunchy and crispy. And, and seasoned. All right, so for the wet though, we got our buttermilk and then we got some, some eggs and hot sauce. Right? Yeah. What so, kind of hot sauce is this? So this is uh, one of my faves, it's just Frank's. Hell yeah. Red hot. Classic is right, food. So this is gonna go right into our buttermilk. It's gonna give it more tang, a little bit of heat. It's not as spicy as it looks. And then Adam's gonna go ahead and crack these eggs. We're gonna use the cobra technique. <laughs> awesome. Oh, yeah. Quisk. Nice. How's that looking, Chef? Wonderful. Salad? Perfectly whisk. Awesome. Right. Um, and then just real quick, we have our uh, sir chicken spice here. Nice. Um, so this is just a spice blend that we make here in house. Uh, Korean chili flakes, some smoked paprika, cayenne, uh, black pepper, sugar, salt. Oh, you can't know what it is. Yeah, it's a secret. <laughs> so I make a an oil, a spiced oil with this same spice, mm -hmm. and then we also season it with the spice. Which is well. like a big thing. That's like a Nashville hot chicken yeah, thing. That's like want a that chili differentiator. Oil. Right. So. This is the Perilla Spice Blend. It is proprietary, so you're gonna have to come to Chicago to try it if you really want to, but I will have a recipe for you on my website, so be sure to peep that if you wanna to try to make your own. Yeah. Yeah! <laughs> uh, as long as you have enough cayenne in there, I think that's like the main thing, right? It should be hot. Yes. You tell me. Depending on your level and your tolerance of heat, okay. right? Like you can put whatever you want in there, depending on how spicy you Just want it. Just because I'm white doesn't mean you have to assume Ghost that I can Ghost peppers are that. good here <laughs> as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good with, you're familiar with Korean food, so I know you can handle the heat. All right, word. and then the chicken wise, like this is like the same thing, right? Yep. Split. Salt and pepper. Salt and pepper, word. 2%. Okay. Um, 2% cure. Nice, two percent. Overnight, yeah, that's cool. it. You can do this at home too. It's actually a really easy way to make chicken. People always ask me like, how can I make my chicken breast taste good? And I'm yeah. like, just put it in the fridge, salt it overnight, let it dry out, it'll get crispy. No, for sure, man. Right on. Cool. Let's fry. All right, let's you do ready? it. So we're gonna take the chicken, Yeah. hit it with a little bit of dredge. Right. Then we're going to batter it, and then it's gonna go right into the fryer. Go. Just as Andy says, for the Korean fried chicken, we're gonna hit it in the dredge, then batter, then fry it. Now, obviously we're doing this in a restaurant with commercial grade fryers, but you can easily do this at the crib with a big heavy bottomed Dutch oven on your stovetop. Just be sure to fry the chicken in batches because the oil is gonna cool drastically faster than the oil in these commercial fryers. And that might sound intimidating, but if you use a thermometer and keep tabs on the oil temp, you're gonna be Gucci. Now, we are double frying this chicky, meaning that we fry once at a low temperature to cook the chicken through, then remove it from the oil to let it rest. Then we're gonna fry a second time to crisp up the exterior of the chicken, leaving us an ultra crispy end result. The details on how to do all of this can be found in the recipe. For the Nashville hot chicken, we're gonna toss it in its dredge, toss it into the batter, then back into the dredge before throwing it in the frying oil. So, just some clarification there. Don't worry if your dredge gets a little wet from the buttermilk over time. That's actually a good thing and helps to create that craggly, classic American fried chicken exterior that we all know and love. All right, so we're out here now. We're about to sausage these bad boys, the KFC. So what's like the setup here? We are going to dunk this in our KFC sauce. It's mm. our sweet and spicy traditional sauce. So it's gochujang and then a ton of other ingredients. We got oh, yeah. soy, we got ginger, garlic that we cooked down, our aromatics, and then our seasoning. So like rice vinegar, soy sauce, things like that. Looks gorgeous. All right, so we're gonna start just dunking these guys in there. Straight up in the sauce, baptized in the, in the, sauce, the sauce. Exactly. Just let it pick up some of that action. And the great thing about fried chi or Korean fried chicken is even with this uh, marinade and sauce on it, they're, they're gonna stay nice and crispy. Hell yeah, dude, I was gonna say, I mean, this is literally glass. That 
extra heat. All right, Nashville hot chicken. So what's uh, what's going down with this? Okay, so this is a little bit different. You can tell like you got the traditional southern style like yeah. crackly skin, totally. right? Super crispy, crunchy, delicious. Crunchy. Crunchy. Hell yeah. Uh, so we're gonna dunk this in our mm -hmm. spice mix here. So that's that, just in oil that and you then, toasted. Yep, and then we turn the oil up to about 300 degrees and then we toast the spices just like Hell that. Yeah. Cool. Super aromatic already. So literally dunk. Yeah. Proprietary spice blend number 591. <laughs> don't touch your balls. <laughs> Mostly don't or, touch your balls. Or touch your balls. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're into, man. <laughs> All right, so we got both of our chickies. We got our Korean fried chicken, KFC, and our Nashville fried chicken, and all the accoutrement with our Korean fried chicken that's garnished with mm -hmm. sesame seeds, green chili flakes, scallions. Traditionally, they come with pickles. So these are mm -hmm. pickled radish cubes. Cool. And of course, a little bit of ranch. This is our house-made Perilla Ranch. Thank Over you. here with our sir, our sir chicken, you, we do serve the Perilla Ranch with it as well. But this is our Nashville hot style fried chicken. Mm -hmm. Comes with coleslaw, a little honey mustard, and of course, some sweet and tangy barbecue that's, sauce. That's the sauce, that's the perilla sauce? That's barbecue sauce. Oh, that's the barbecue sauce? That's nice. barbecue. Right on, all right, well, let's try them. All right. All right, now that we got everything situated and ready to go, we shall commence the battle of the bites. <laughs> so there's a bone that goes right through the middle here, so mm -hmm. what I'll do is just cut it down sure. and then get the bone exposed. Get a sample going. Mm, there you go. Perfect. Perfect. That's mush. Two for two, baby. Let's go. Ooh, my lord. <laughs> yes. That's crazy. All right, bro. Yeah. So, what do you think? Let's try. Our, let's try to start with our. Which is more spicy? Would you say? Uh, this guy. Let's start with the mild stuff then okay. first, just so like our mouth isn't completely fine. So, just looking at this right now, look at that crust, man. That's wild. Yeah. It's still with the sauce over <laughs> there. Listen, listen. To it. Damn. Got the scallion stuck to it all. Here we go. That does it for me. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's tasty. The chicken is super tender. Perfectly cooked. I don't know who cooked it. <laughs> the thing about Korean fried chicken that I think is so huge mm. is like it's so good at balancing the sweetness. Mm -hmm. It's like the cornstarch and the sweet sort of like balancing is yeah. kind of what does it for me for Korean fried chicken. Word. Rinsey rinse and then go rinse. Rinse. Oh wait, wait, dude, I forgot the most important part. Oh, the beer. Cheers. Cheers. Not sponsored. <laughs> yes. Now that we have our palate cleansed, yeah. shall we? Let's go. A little Nashville hot action. Nashville. So this is a little more delicate of a crust. Yeah. Still extremely moist. Mmm. Just off the bat, so much more delicate. Definitely spicier. That dry rub is nice. I like the little like perilla twist with the furikake. It's pretty good. Mm -hmm. But like. Different chicken. It's two different products. It's a, you know, it's like although it's fried chicken or brining process is the same. That dredging uh, and the batter makes a world of a difference. Yeah, right? dude, it's really good, man. Cool. Um, the tough decision, the tough part. Now we mm. have to choose one. If you had to choose one, oh. putting your biases at the door. All right, Oof. which one would you choose and why? Gun to your head. God damn. I grew up eating Popeyes, KFC, sure. Harold's. Bojangles, you know, like yeah. I'm always partial to this southern style fried chicken. Wow. Um, in this instance, I think that uh, they're both so good, <laughs> but I'm gonna have to go with our sir chicken just because I love the crackly skin. Sure. Um, yeah, and I love just the, the southern style. Although this super crunchy, crispy, delicious sure. chicken is. Listen, it's, it's not an easy choice, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. All right, so my turn. I love, who doesn't love this, right? This is yeah. the classic fried chicken. When you think of fried chicken, this is what influenced everything else, right? Yes. The, this is an American dish right here. Mm -hmm. I will say though, I am such a fan of what starch does to the exterior yeah. of chicken, yeah. of anything that you deep fry it in. For sure. This is a lot more delicate of a crunch. This is a lot more, yeah. it's gonna sound so dumb, but like crunchier of a crunch, right? It's yeah. more to the tooth. No, absolutely. It's like an armor. The chicken's wearing armor. Yeah. And of course, both can stand up to the sauce, as you can see here. Still crispy, still crispy. But if I had to choose, I'm going with the KFC, the Korean fried chicken. Nice. Simply because of that, that body of armor that it has. It's just yeah. like an experience eating chicken. You just can't like, get That's anywhere true. else. That's true. Yeah, I don't, I don't love you any less 
It's I know. Just, this is like asking him what his favorite like kid is, quite literally. Oh, I, I know. These are like original recipes that like he came up with. So I appreciate your time, man. Of course, man. And um, this is a blast. Dude. Handshake too. Oh yeah. Like Are we high fiving? Uh yeah. Big shout out to Andy and the guys over at Perilla for opening up their kitchen and throwing down on some chicky with us. You guys are legends. Remember, I'm just one dude with one opinion, so whatever you think, whoever you thought won this battle, let us know in the comments below. On that same note, if you have any ideas for us for future Battle of the Bites episodes, leave those in the comments below too. I'd love to see what you guys think. That's all I got for you, so TY, so, so much for watching, and I will see you very soon.